What's up, guys? Nick Major here with Adobe Radio. I'm out at our North Hollywood studios where actor RJ Mitty is going to be stopping by. You probably know him from Breaking Bad or Switched at Birth. I'm going to be chatting with him about the latest projects he's been working on, as well as the fact that he, an actor with cerebral palsy, has been using his platform to really bring support and spread awareness to the fact that this industry severely underrepresents people with disabilities. Stick around and stay tuned to see what RJ has to say. So you are back out here in Los Angeles. I found out you didn't live here anymore because I was talking to my good friend Katie LeClaire. Yeah. And I told her you were going to be stopping by. She has a radio show here. Yep. Yeah, and, I, I've been on it. Uh -huh. I, I was late to it. <laughs> <laughs> and you were early today, so you learned your mistakes from last I time. Did. But you're out in Texas now? I am. I am in Texas. I, I moved there this past uh, August, September. Love it. I, um, I started working for my family's foundation. I, um, I've been running that for the last six, seven months now. Mm. Um, I've been working with it forever, but I've um, uh, been working there more intimately. So Austin and a town called Brownsville mm -hmm. um, have been really big parts of my life the last, last three years, but um, even more so now. So what is the foundation that you guys have uh, created and what's its purpose? Um, so my, my grandfather created it um, in the early 90s. Um, the purpose is um, quite a few things. We, give, we have a scholarship and grants program. I actually do my best to, to maintain this life and that life a little a little distance. Um, but um, he founded it, and he wanted to focus on elder care, education, disability services, youth development, and aging. Um, and we do we have a scholarship and grant program, and um, we're right now doing um, a pretty um, big investment in Brownsville because that's where he was from, and uh, he. He helped found a district there and built the children's museum there through the through the foundation, and uh, over the years the foundation has done builds and kind of community things, mm -hmm. and we slow down and focus on grants, and then we do that again, and then a couple of years go by, and we and and kind of just maintain that kind of pace. So it's been about five or six years since the foundation did something like this, and um, I was like, well, I think it's time for us to do it again. Um, kind of invest into the community through the foundation and, and make an impact like he did. Right now, though, I, I still am working. I, mo I came back for a couple of weeks show, doing this movie called Isaac. Oh, I read into it and it sounds so cool. It sounds creepy. It it's sounds super weird. Creepy. It's super weird. It's super fun. It, you know, I like avant-garde projects. Yeah. I like things that are unique, things that you just wouldn't see. Mm -hmm. Like things that you're like, what is this? Cause like sometimes you know you watch a project and you go, eh. Next, next, and sometimes you watch a project and you just like, dude. I'm excited to see that because the, just the description of it sounded really cool and creepy and something that I yeah. haven't seen you kind of perform in. Well, they cut my hair. I know. I was gonna say oh, you're yeah. looking good. You got this slick cut out here. It's weird. It's one. It's one dimension. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's the same inch all around. <laughs> But you're out here with your mom, you said, right? I, my mother, my mother um, came out with me. My sister flies in tomorrow. My, it's actually my sister's birthday on the 17th of February. How old is she going to be? Um, she will be 16. 16. Yeah. So this was the sister that was like one years old that first yeah. booked the gig that brought your family to L.A. That then, when you were here, you got the Breaking Bad audition. Yep. Oh my God, that's got to be awesome. Yep. She, and you guys, you have a good relationship. Great it sounds relationship. like. Relationship. And yeah. is she still pursuing acting stuff? Was that only what she yeah. did as a baby, or is um, she? She likes it. You know. The industry's hard, and now it's very different from when I started to now other kids starting because of social media and all these other yep. aspects mm -hmm. of this industry. It just kind of like, it's, it's really sometimes unbearable. <laughs> Talk to me about when you started in this industry, though. You started, and I feel like there's, we've seen progress or big changes since then, but I'm curious, when you were a kid growing up, were there people in the industry that you looked up to with uh, any sort of disabilities? Was, was there anyone who, because I feel like when I was watching you on Breaking Bad, it was almost one of the first times where I realized, like, this is actually somebody yeah. with something that is being portrayed accurately on TV. I personally never felt the need to be represented. Um, I didn't really have that understanding. And I think a lot of people don't realize that it's, it's very important to be represented in media and, and be represented in a positive manner because cause all you see is negativity. And if you see only, only six people being sick and no one's getting better, well, when you get sick, what happens? <laughs> it doesn't look good. It, it doesn't, doesn't make look you good. feel good. <laughs> so, so we show people that, that are, are not... I, and I, 
like that are going through things that are dealing with life situations but it's only negative stuff when you have something happen to you it's only going to be negative and I um I was very lucky that I I was a big outdoors kid I was a big kind of like when I wanted to do something I would go do it and it wasn't so much TV or that concept so that was something that I, I learned the importance of working in the industry and uh, I mean Forrest Gump was pretty much the closest thing I had to a reference and that was because everyone would say run Forrest run Oh, to you? <laughs> to me. Oh. <laughs> I had braces on. Oh, okay, on so, your legs. Yeah. And it, it wasn't out of malice or anything. There was no, there, it was just, that was, that's the only reference. That's what they saw. Had that's whatever, yeah. That was the only thing. So now I, I see a big growth in the industry of, of more representation. And I'm curious about this. I have a question. I'm not going to keep focusing Go on Breaking it. Bad. But no, you're fine, man. You're <laughs> good. That's why we're here. I know um, that the character Vince, he based it off of a, a college friend that, that he had. And I know that you had a handful of auditions before it got locked in. Correct. And the role was obviously written for someone with cerebral palsy. But were the other people auditioning? Did they all have cerebral palsy as well? Was that? I, I think a, mo the majority that were aware and working at the time that had CP, I think, did get get submitted for the role. Um, I remember though going in and seeing people that were much older than me mm -hmm. uh, auditioning. Um, I wasn't, and, and they had cerebral palsy. There was a couple of kids, a um, couple of people around, not just in Los Angeles, but the country that, that had agents with CP and um, they were not agents with CP, but they had comma comma <laughs> CP. Yeah, they yeah, had a former agents. with <laughs> with cerebral palsy, and um, <laughs> but um, but I, for me, it was really close between me and someone else with CP that was a local in in uh, in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, but they they went they went with me, and I I've been very thankful ever since. But there was a there was a part where this guy I I can't tell you who, but a working oh, okay. actor. Working actor, I kept. Someone kept saying about like, oh, he got the part. He got the part on Breaking Bad. And this was like a couple of weeks before. Um, like I was auditioning for it, and I was still auditioning when I was hearing this. I'm like, this, this is weird. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I'm still auditioning uh -huh. for this. I, I went in five times, four in Los Angeles and once in New Mexico, and I, I kept hearing this. I'm like, Do, does he know that they they're still doing open calls? And, and the guy goes, he's like, he shrugs his shoulders. I'm like, okay, cool, man. <laughs> and um, and I get it, and I shoot, and I hear it again that he's he's still on hold for it, oh, <laughs> but we're wow. shooting the pilot. And if long story short, he, he and I I find it very funny. Some people don't, but I found <laughs> it I found it amusing because he was like he was mad because he's like, I heard through the grapevine. He's like, man, I got beat up by this crippled kid. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and you came out. You got the role. I got and the role. He found out when it aired on TV, he, I guess. He, he found out who the cripple kid was. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing. The universe, it's still alive and thriving for Breaking Bad. I mean, Very much so. I mean, uh, so this past October, El Camino, it, it dropped. Yep. Did you guys all come back together for that premiere? Uh, yeah. A couple yeah, of you guys? Most, most pretty much everyone did. Um, I, You know, we're all working. Everyone's, everyone's constantly awesome. busy. Um, we came out, you know, Better Call Saul is, is still going. And, season and five is about to drop. Yeah, and this is, um, they're saying final season for them. And, mm -hmm. and you know, they're, people are still talking about the show. I, I was literally having a conversation today about this. And we were talking about shows that, that you can, that just don't die. <laughs> like, they just, they just don't, they, they live through these different entities and, and this awareness and it all goes back to that stem showing for Breaking Bad with Better Call Saul and, and El Camino and and just AMC really created a, a strong a strong tree and, and it's it's growing branches mm -hmm. and it's 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 one of those things where it's really cool to see how the show has continued to change my life and everyone that, that's been a part of it and you know, it, it was special. It was a unique project. Even just two weeks ago, they have a, a restaurant, a pop-up one out here I in know. L.A. And I went there for lunch two weeks ago. I, I actually talked to that guy. I um, I want to do a pop-up shop, too, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I want to do a breakfast one. <laughs> yeah, how dope you would that be? breakfast the how best How dope meal? would that be? That would be perfect. We cooked breakfast in the studio today for the first time ever, and I was like, this is so perfect because RJ's stopping by. Why? So why? Wait, but um, you didn't cook it while I was here, though. Oh, you weren't here for that? <laughs> I thought you got some. 
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, that, that worked out perfect. But you should. You absolutely should do a pop-up. That'd be, yeah. that'd it be fun. It would be fun. I, just so much work, man. No, I, just I so much work. And you're a busy guy. So what are the projects you're working on? I, I saw there was one standing up for Sunny. Standing up for Sunny, which is out. Okay. Um, it's, it's on iTunes right now. We shot in Australia, a local, a local Australian film. Damn, you shot that in Australia? Um, yeah, I loved it. That's I, cool. Australia is an, an amazing place. Um, I, I have so many amazing friends there. But um, the the film is in based in Australia about Australian comedians and um, comedy and stand up and um, kind of like also like life lessons because there's some like like depression and and cerebral palsy and all kinds of different aspects of of life that that just. It's 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 a rom com. Yeah, and it, it looked awesome. It looked like it was shot incredibly well and shot it was talented visually. as hell. You know the best I love working on Australia for many reasons. But one in particular is the professionalism and the education that they, they give Australian workers in the industry is next level. They got a good standard that they Great always meet. Standard. And and Australian filmmakers have an amazing standard. But that was a very special film. Uh, I have another one called Carol the Bells. Yes. Um, Joey Travolta, uh-huh. who has um, schools um, around California, but but outside of the state as well, for uh, train people with disabilities in the industry. Um, positions in front and behind the camera. Hi. So this past, um, not this winter, but a winter. Two, of 2018? Two, two, cy- two cycles ago. Let's just <laughs> many seasons passed. Many seasons have passed. <laughs> and we shot this in Bakersfield. And um, Joey takes the, um, the best of each of the schools. And um, we put them on our, our movie, on our feature. And in positions. Not, not, just, like, uh, not just like in side positions. Mm-hmm. In actual key positions. Because they're they're professionals, they know what they're doing, and um, and really trying to create and show. Because there's a stigma around disability, you know, disability subconsciously has a pull to liability. There's a, there's this there's this little there's there's a, this phrasing, and and it's a, it, it may not be there, but subconsciously it, it, there's there is when you see disability, sometimes you see liability. You're like, oh my God, there's going to be all these things and we have to do this. And we want to show that that's not factual. You don't, yes, you need to make your set safe. So you need to make your set safe. But not just because for someone with a disability, but for everyone that's just around. just the law. <laughs> the I law. mean. And, and we, want, we, we want to hold that bar. We want to raise that and show and, and train people so they have those tools. And uh, we shot it. We shot a full feature in 14 days. Oh, wow. Um, that's a busy two weeks. That's how movies work. It I'm is. shooting this movie in 14 days. Nice. Um, and then we go. We go to the next one. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the name of the game for, for that. And if you would say, oh, we have 75% or 70% disabled crew, and we're shooting in 14 days, people, and you'd, you'd probably look at me like I was a little like, what, what, that's, that's not a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Did it. Turned out great. No issues. No no. No speed bumps other than what happens on the set. Every other set. Every other set. And and really hoping to make another one after that. Um, Zach and, and Shia from, from um, Peanut Butter Falcon. Yes, which Zach, he was just at the Oscars. He's amazing. I, I that was, was incredible just, to see. I was just with him in, um, in Berkeley. He was being honored and um, um, had great conversation. I met him a couple of times through IMPWD and other and, and real abilities, uh, film festivals, and you know he um, he's such a great talent and he had he did such a great job for that. So when I saw him in Chaya at the Oscars, I was like, yeah, that's a that, that's pretty dope. It was so amazing because he was up on stage presenting an award, yeah. and I was so happy to see that because I just felt like that was a fantastic step forward. Yeah. And their movie in itself was incredible, one of my favorite movies of one last of year. I, I really think it was probably one of the best movies I've seen as an overall film. Like, you, like, like I said earlier, you watch a movie and you go, oh, that was good, you have to see it. But like when I, when I saw Peanut Butter Falcon, I was like, that's a good that's a good movie that's a good vibe like visually visually story 
acting. They just I, they nailed it. I I, I was hoping that more. one would pick up some nominations at I least. Too. But uh, so I want to talk about kind of how has social media changed and impacted people with disabilities? Because when it was something that was so often either not shown or seen, now I come across pages of incredible people. It helps people get out. Uh-huh. It helps the people that don't always have a voice have a voice and be seen. They can't always leave their room who who have that anxiety, who have that depression, or who are facing physical limitations that, that are like, I want to get out there, but I don't believe I can. And getting those baby steps into someone to be like, yo, if you can't do that immediately, we'll start here. Mm-hmm. And then work to that. And then work to that social engagement. And that in itself could could be very beneficial Mm -hmm. and you you had the uh your anti-bullying campaign yeah which is cut the bull yes because i think it is so important if people with disabilities are comfortable enough to share their stories yeah but they're gonna have to realize there is a chance that people are going to say horrible things look i i'm a i'm a i have I, i don't have many pet peeves one of my pet peeves is when people say we're gonna end it we're going to stop it. You literally cannot, unless you are using mind control. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> unless you've got something that no one else has. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's, you know, some people don't get bullied, but some people do. And if you have a disability, it says you are um, three times as likely as someone without to be bullied, to, to be a victim of bullying. And, you know, you don't have to be. And if you see it and you want to step up for yourself, step up for others, um, more often than not, we can't step up for ourselves. You, whatever you put this limitation on, maybe I, I'm just gonna let them beat me, or I'm just gonna let them talk to me like that. You know what? It's a lot easier to be compliant than not. I agree. <laughs> I I wholeheartedly agree that it's so much easier to save the fight. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know when you need to know when to fight back, and you know when you need to to be able to be yourself and to show that that kindness and to to be reminded of that is is hard um and that's why i was like let's let's do something to kind of help that and to to get that step out of comfort and show support and you know it's it's really gets down to to direct engagement and peer-to-peer support at the end of the day we can't do this alone and if you do see someone that is being belittled or bullied or whatever it may be you you have to you don't you don't have to, to take the bullet for them <laughs> like you don't you don't have to, to superman dive in front of them but what you do have is to be able to be be that person to go like i i see you're going through something i see something's happening here what what do you need to be better and I, I think that often we, we take for granted. So where do you think is a, a positive point to where this industry needs to be at some point? I was reading that Ruderman white pages, and it says that, that currently, at least in all the network and all the TV shows combined, only 22% of people who are portraying people with a disability are actually people with disabilities themselves. And that's what surprised me as I looked back into previous years. And like from when you started Breaking Bad, that's actually a huge increase. Mm-hmm. That's actually a lot better. Yeah, I mean, it was at the time only like three percent, uh-huh. and like very, and and it wasn't even on the air. Um, I I do see massive growth. I I see, you know, I was talking with them the other day. I've I've talked to people. If this was any type of ethnicity or religion or whatever, maybe it would not be acceptable. Mm-hmm. And, and it, ha- I mean, you've seen the huge movements in recent years. It, Oscars all white. This yeah, that. Yeah, it just would not be acceptable, and and it's. It's one of those things where, for me, I believe that everyone should be able to audition for the role. No matter what. Physical, non-physical, whatever, whatever it is, I think everyone should be allowed. In a time where we're, we are growing, the industry is growing, the percentiles are growing, the, the people are growing. And, and, and when I mean in skill, raising that bar to the next level, being out in the public, having people see you, having... Because... Having, you have an obligation to represent yourself in the media and social media helps with that social media is only about representing yourself (laughs) in the media so positive social media controlling your presence and audition 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 putting yourself out there submitting yourself breaking down the doors for your agents when they're when they're saying because I was just I was just talking about this with a with a buddy of mine who's an actor about agents and they're like, well you're not this, 
And he's like, I, I'm, he's, he's like, I'm not ethnic enough. He's, he's like, I'm Albanian. Like, what, I, he's like, he's like, I got, I, I was looking at him, I'm like, yo, you got a tent, man. You can work. <laughs> like, it's like, you got, you go hit the sun a little bit more. You can be anything you want. And they're like, no, 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 but they're only hiring this. It's like, okay, well, no. How do you know? How do they know? They don't. So put yourself out in positions that, you know, maybe that role is meant for you. It may not be written for you, but it may be meant for you. And that role may mean that that character is in a wheelchair, or that character has a lisp, or that character has whatever that person has. Why doesn't that just, you don't have to pay extra for it. People want to give it to you for free. Don't look at it like we have to, we have to hire this person because of this. No, that, that's, that's icing. That's, that's character. That is one aspect of that person that you can use to highlight that character. Don't make it a pivotal point, just make it exist. And providing opportunities for people and is, is part of this, but at the same time, we have a responsibility to put ourselves out and to, to find our agent that cares about us and to find our representation and, and to build our social media and to, you want to feel represented, go, go represent. Go, go change that mentality. Go shake those hands. Go, go be seen at the grocery store. Go be seen driving cars. Go be seen doing things that people don't think individuals with disabilities can do. And the more you see this, the more you're going to see growth. And, and we already have. Because you see it more. There's so many more people that are, are, are jumping off buildings and, and skiing down these insane mountains and, and creating movies and films and, and whole plot points. And, and people are hungry for this. People want this. This is a billion dollar industry. This is an, and it's not being utilized properly. How do we put people and, not just, and at the same time not just take advantage of them? Not just, not just take advantage, and not because they have a disability, but because they have stars in their eyes. That's, that's, that's a big facet of this industry is, is you're too look busy seeing, seeing the beauty of it all and you're, the nostalgia of I made it. Mm-hmm. There's more making it. See, appreciate the stars, but at the same time realize that you're still on earth. Thank you so much for stopping by hey, and man, chatting. I really appreciated it. I have uh, really been looking forward to this. Well, it's so, good to see you, man. Yeah, good to see you again for the first time in probably 10, no, not 10 years. I don't know, eight years since I so worked I'm at Hot so Topic. I'm so happy that you, could, you, 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 you got my Hot Topic. I bought eyeliner, right? Did you? Yeah, you probably did. You're a little emo kid. Coming. Yeah, No, man. I was emo all the way. Yeah, hair the down, hair. lip ring. They, was, I, I lost my hair, man. <laughs> they, they, they took it from me. My first thought when you came in was, is that RJ? With that short Keeper. hair. All right. Thank you again, RJ. And best of luck to the shooting out here. Can't wait to see what you do next. And uh, have a great day.